I'm back with another YouTube video and it's been a very long time since I've done some acrylic press on so today I wanted to bring you guys with me and give you guys a new and updated press on nail tutorial. I am making these press ons for myself today and I did first pull out all of the nail sizes that I'm going to need for my set and now I'm going in with this blue sticky tack and I'm going to apply it to the nail stand and then press down on the press on. So I don't have any extra long full coverage nail tips so I did use these smaller ones and I am going to cut them down and later apply some nail tips to them to extend them. Of course if you already have some long full coverage nail tips you won't have to do it this way but like I said I didn't have any so this was my next best thing. So moving on I'm finally starting to apply those nail tips and it'll actually be much easier if you file the previous nail tips first and then glue them down. Since I didn't do any filing before gluing the nail tips down they were a little slippery and it was just a little harder to get them to stay. So be sure to file them first if you're going to use this method. Now I'll be cutting these nail tips down to desired length and I was really feeling like a long to extra long kind of vibe but not too long. So I'm going to cut them down here and then I'm going to make sure I size them up and make sure that they're the same length. When we start laying the acrylic, we need the application to be as smooth as possible. So before I start to apply my acrylic, I am going to make sure that I file down where I glued the nail tip. And I did also start to file the rest of the nail, but this was more so for me to actually see the shape since these nail tips were clear. It's been a little minute since I've made some acrylic press on so I just wanted to make sure that they were perfect and I wanted to be able to see everything I was doing. So I'm just going across the surface of the nails and then I'm going to go to the side wall, straighten those out and also straighten out the bottom too. For this first nail right here, I did mess the application up, so that's why you probably see a little bit of acrylic on the nail tip. But jumping right into the application, I did first start off with one bead right underneath where I placed the nail tip. I'm going to start to pull this down a little bit and then very slowly I'm going to perfect the side walls. And when you're doing your press on, especially with acrylic, you need these nails to be as even as possible. You guys are going to see me constantly wiping, going across the sidewalls, just going over the whole entire nail to make sure that this is flat, this is even, and this is smooth. For these press on nails, you do not need an apex unless you want your nails to be that thick. But me personally, I prefer my press on nails to be thin, but not like super thin, they're going to break. So I'm just gradually going up the nail, making sure that all of the acrylic powder is on top of the nail before I start to blend this down into the previous acrylic. One question that I commonly see with acrylic press ons is how do you get them to not shrink? And this is what I do right here. So first I'm making sure that all of my acrylic powder is in the center and then I'm going to turn my brush around and start to brush backwards towards the top of the nail. This is going to help prevent your nail tip shrinking. I know it could be really, really frustrating when you make a set for yourself or for somebody else and the sizing was correct and then you finish the nails and they no longer fit. So you do want to be very mindful about that and just use that technique and we'll go over this again. Thank you. 
more recently i've actually been considering the slowly switching over to doing more press on sets instead of taking clients i kind of just felt like this would reduce no shows i felt like this would reduce any like tardiness because you know you'll have your client pay for the set before you start it so you've already been paid and now the only thing you have to do is create the nails and ship them and make sure that your client is satisfied I do also feel like with press-ons, it's like limited interaction with the person that's actually buying the press-ons, especially if you have a website. So because of this, I've been leaning more towards creating press-ons. I had so much fun doing these and I really hope that you guys love this tutorial because I know I do. You guys could let me know down below like... Do you guys like taking clients? If you could, would you want to transfer to only doing press-ons? Because I'm not going to lie, y'all. Give me a couple months and I might not be taking clients anymore. But we'll see. I'm not going to talk too soon. But I know I'm putting it in the air. I did want to talk about the cuticle application again for the press on. So as you guys can see, I'm making sure that all of the acrylic powder is right on top of the nail. And then I'm going to turn my brush around and very lightly start to brush this acrylic powder back. Do not get confused by like the blue sticky tag that's in the back. These nails are not thin. I know you can still see that blue underneath. But it is a very, very solid color blue. And I feel like back when I first started doing press-ons, I would try to cover the blue and stack the acrylic up right there. And it's no need because once you take the sticky stuff out, you're not going to be able to see that. But moving on, I am starting to file these nails. So sometimes I'll take the nail off the stand. Sometimes I'll leave it attached. But I'm just going to use my 8080 grit hand file to file the surface like I did earlier and to reshape the sidewalls. When I start to paint my designs, I need this to be a very, very easy. So right now I'm working on getting these nails very, very smooth. So I am going to file over the surface, like I said earlier. And my main focus is the bottom of the nail and the cuticle area, because of course you do not want a very thick cuticle. They will see that. And then I'm going underneath the nail to remove any bulk. I do like to apply cuticle oil to the nails before I start to buff them. Y'all, this gets the nails really, really smooth. I am going to clean them off with some alcohol afterwards. I know some people were talking about, oh, like if you do this when you go and apply the top coat, it's going to separate. Yeah, I mean, it's oil. So when you're finished with doing this, make sure that you clean the nails off with alcohol to clean all of the oil off of the surface. Moving on, I did take some alcohol wipes and I wiped all of the nails before I started to go in with my gel polish. Y'all, these nails are not painted with any top coat. That's really how smooth these nails are after the oil and the alcohol. I was going for more of a summer vibe today, so I really wanted to use this soft yellow. And then afterwards, I'm going to go in with some orange and do ombre with my airbrush. Because these nails are so smooth, it was very, very easy for me to go ahead and apply my French tip. Well, not apply it, but to dry it. If the application is bumpy, lumpy, and uneven, it's going to be much harder to create that perfect smile line.
as the last nail is starting to cure i am going to move on to this one and i know i wanted to do like some croc print design so i'm first going back in with that yellow gel polish and i'm going to create like this swirl kind of thing and then fill in the rest of it with my yellow gel polish For my orange today, I decided to use a darker orange. The lighter orange I tried to use did not show. So this is how that ended up looking. It came out really pretty and I decided to use that same dark orange here for my crock print. So I'm currently going in with some Bloomin' Gel for me, a secret. I absolutely love their Bloomin' Gel. And afterwards, using a dotted tool, I'm going to start to create these small dots going down the nail and on the sides. When I was doing these nails, these were a 100% freestyle and I honestly wasn't too sure what I had going on. So I had decided to completely finish the nails I had already started so that I don't confuse myself and so that I'm not getting stressed out trying to figure out what's next. Because at least for me, whenever I'm freestyling, if I start overthinking or I start, oh my God, like what am I going to do for this nail next or what's going to look best, they're going to come out ugly. They are. So whenever you're freestyling, just relax, go with the flow. And if you don't like something, just remove it. But don't take too much time thinking because it's going to mess you up. As always, I am using my Mia Secret glue to glue down my rhinestones. And I am using my Serenity Impriosa crystals. If you are interested in transferring into using some real crystals and no more plastic ones, I'm going to link their website down below. For this nail, I decided to do some 3D flowers and normally I start off with the rhinestone and then do my petals around it, but I actually wanted to airbrush these flowers. So I'm going to first start off with a few small beads to create my petals and once this is dry, I'm going to go right back in with that orange paint. If you do need a more detailed and a slowed down 3D flower tutorial, I do have multiple tutorials on my page. Not exactly with this technique, it's still the same technique, but like I said, I normally add the rhinestone first, but I only did it because I knew I wanted to go in with some airbrush in the center. After going back in with my airbrush, I did need to clean that up because of course it did get on some of the nude part of the nail. I'm going to let this fully cure for 60 seconds before I apply my rhinestone and then I'm going to create two more flowers.
for the pinky nail i did want to apply some of this orange to the center of the nail so very slowly i'm going to start to apply that airbrush until it's as dark as i would like it after fully curing that i'm now going back in with that blooming gel and i'm going to use that yellow polish to create like you can kind of call them petals i've seen this be done as flowers before but I'm just going to take my time as I'm doing this. This was my first time kind of doing this design. And then I'll put some rhinestones on these later. You will also have to fully cure the blooming gel before or doing anything else because the polish will continue to spread so now it is fully cured and i'm going back in with that mia seeker rhinestone glue and my serenity crystals For the thumbnail, I really wasn't too sure what I wanted to do, so I decided to just do another ombre French tip and just apply a few rhinestones in the middle. And when I tell y'all, I am ready to go on vacation. Like with summertime coming and it's getting hot outside and these nails and these colors, I'm just in love and I really just can't wait to take a vacation and just go all out on my nails. So I am about to finish up this video. I do hope that you guys enjoyed because I know I did. You guys let me know down below any questions you might have and let me know down below how y'all feel about these.